I'm Ginger Ketting Weller, the president of the Adventist International Institute of Advanced Studies, and this is People of IAS, where we get to hear the stories of our students, their testimonies, and their experiences. Today, I'm talking with Philip Achoki. Philip, tell us where you're from and what program you're in. Well, um, I come from Kenya. Mm -hmm. Kenya happens to be the western, eastern part of Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, at IAS, I do business administration, focusing on management. Okay, so the yes. master's in business administration. Yes. Okay, very good. And we've gotten to interact before quite a number of times as we yeah. have worked on programs or whatever it might be together. Philip, mm -hmm. tell me a little bit of your story, uh, your testimony in connection with IAS. Well, I have a number of stories, but I decide to give only one <laughs> that is linked to me being in IAS okay. now. My story dates back to 2013. Mm -hmm. That's when I joined university in my city. Mm -hmm. uh, it was expected that as a pastor's kid, perhaps I could be in an Adventist college. Mm -hmm. But then my dad had made a promise. He said, the school you will go depends on your performance in the national examination. Mm -hmm. And God, to God be the glory, I did very well in my high school and I got a call to go to a government school. So the issue was, of course, worship, Sabbath worship and other issues. Mm -hmm. And this was one of the riskiest decisions I've made because we knew exactly what happens in secular schools. Mm -hmm. But then I thought God had a reason for that to happen, so I decided to go. Mm -hmm. In my second year, that's 2000, end of 2014, I felt I didn't like what I was doing mm. in my college. But then I was doing Bachelor's of Commerce, focusing in actuarial science. And our campus was a public school, but we had built a church on campus, a big church of a capacity of uh, 3,000 people. Mm -hmm. So every end of a semester, our campus could sponsor various mission trips around the country, like over 10 mission trips for two weeks, sometimes three weeks or even a month. Mm -hmm. So every April, August and December, we were out for evangelistic campaigns for two weeks or three weeks. Mm. And after doing this for a while, I thought I enjoyed doing mission work. Uh -huh. That's where I found fulfillment, going, visiting people, sharing people with people about the gospel, and even seeing people's lives change. So coming back, I thought, why don't I do this for a lifetime? Mm -hmm. And then I called my dad and shared what I felt. I told him I'm not happy with what I'm doing currently. I could like to shift and do this where I find fulfillment. Mm -hmm. My dad shared with me and he said, that's okay. He was very supportive. My mom was supportive as well. But they said, why don't you finish what you're doing first and then you can make a shift. I saw this advice was very good and I decided to continue for the next two years and then to finish and then see if still the passion was there. So I continued and finished my undergraduate in 2017, May. So the question for you, Philip, was whether you were going to stay in the area of business and commerce or whether you were going to go into pastoring and evangelism. Is, was that what the question was for yes, you? Yes, that was the question at the time. Okay, okay. So after that point, it was like I'm set. I know at the end of my fourth year, this could be the direction mm -hmm. my career will take. Mm -hmm. So I made this known to my friends, my brothers knew, and I was very certain that at the end of my undergraduate, I'm going to shift to theology and do mm -hmm. something in ministry. Mm -hmm. So I continued to do this every end of a semester. Any free time I got, that's what I did. Mm -hmm. Almost every Sabbath, that's what I did. So at the end of my undergraduate, I thought, now is the time. But then there are question marks so that this is what God wants me to do. Mm -hmm. I was not ready to do something that I pushed myself there, not knowing whether God wants me to do exactly that. Mm. So I made the decision to pray for the next one year. I said, beginning May 2017, I will simply pray 
while trying to do anything that lies close to hand, anything that I can find to do, while praying for the next one year to see whether this is God's will. So it, it was in this process of praying and working, doing anything that I came across, going for various evangelistic campaigns for that period, that at one point in August 2018, my singing group was invited to be a guest choir in one of the camp meetings in the country. So during this week, while we stayed there, we sang and we ministered in that place, there was this um, guest speaker who came from the conference. So he saw what I used to do during that week. I was passionate about helping during some sessions. And we had a chat over the week. So he ended up giving me one of his sessions with the youth, senior youths to conduct at the end of the camp meeting. After that, I shared with him what I had in mind. Mm -hmm. And at this time, my dad had told me, if you're thinking of doing theology, then apply to Andrews University. Uh, I never knew of Ayas at that point. Mm -hmm. My dad never knew of Ayas at that point. So I started applying to Andrews and I got admission. So while talking to him, I went ahead to talk to my chaplain in my college. He shared with me, told me Andrews is good, but of course your concern is finances. Mm -hmm. He told me, why don't you consider some school in the Philippines? It's a very nice school, mission oriented, and it's a cheaper option compared to Andrews. So that's when I checked out IAS. I found some information about IAS. I said, I can try and see which one works out. So while talking to this guest speaker, I had an option of Andrews with an admission, but no money to go there. Yeah. And then I had now an option, like I'm focusing, I'm shifting to go to IAS, some school in the Philippines. <laughs> uh, so I shared with him my plans. I'm shifting from actuarial science to focus in ministry. This is where I find joy. This mm -hmm. is where I find fulfillment. So he did encourage me. He told me many young people have done this from our public campuses. They finished mathematics, various courses, even law, and shifted to do ministry. He said, you can do it. So he did give me a go ahead. He said, keep me updated. So at the end of the camp meeting, we left each other. It was on a Thursday the following week that he gave me a call. He said, there's an opportunity in the school you hinted to me about in the Philippines by the name Ayas. Mm -hmm. So he said, but this opportunity is not in theology. It's in business. So then now I got lost <laughs> because all along, since my second year, I knew that uh, at the end of my undergraduate, I'm shifting to do ministry. So I started questioning God, is this you are leading or something to distract me? So he said, think about it. If it be that you're interested, let me know quicker because it's urgent. This was an option of a scholarship, mm -hmm. the so-called master's award, a partial scholarship to do some course. It was specified business administration. So I told him to give me time that night to pray about it and to think due to the urgency so that I speak to him the following afternoon. So I prayed, I talked to God about it, and I think God never answered. <laughs> <laughs> God never answered that at that point. But I got peace in that I said, let me just tell him yes, just to hold on to that opportunity as I keep thinking and praying about it. So once I told him that, he said, let's begin the process because they need some recommendations from your conference. And they need some other recommendation from someone who knows you quite well. So I gave my dad a call. I told him of this. And he was the one near to my home conference, so he could go there and then get a recommendation from one of the executives. So he did that, and one executive there agreed to do a recommendation. Luckily, he was in Ayas some years back as well. Mm. So he gave my dad some good information about Ayas, but also mentioned that life is tough there, so especially financially. So after I got the recommendation, if you pull that recommendation wherever it is now, it was a recommendation to do Master of, Bis uh, Master of Divinity oh. in Naya Seminary. But the opportunity was for business. Yes. 
So I said, perhaps, let me just forward this recommendation. They may confirm my admission in Master of Divinity because that's what I wanted to do. So they confirmed back and said, you are admitted, you got a scholarship for business administration. <laughs> you can begin admission process. That's why I came to IAS with a mind that I'm coming to IAS. Once I'm there, I will shift yeah. and do Master of Divinity. But months later, I'm here, still taking Master of Business Administration, enjoying it, and I'm almost done. That's wonderful. Do you have a question about why, why you're still in your MBA rather than going the other direction? Are you still waiting for God to make that clear? Or has that been settled for you? What are your thoughts about that? Because it really seems like it was circumstances that pushed you to where you are now. Well, it may, be, it may seem like circumstances, yes. And I do believe God sometimes arranges circumstances mm -hmm. for us to be where he wants us to be, mm -hmm. if we are willing. But looking back, I think within I'm settled that this is where God wanted me to be especially this time of my development. Mm. Of course, I don't know about the future. Mm -hmm. I'm open to his leading wherever he wants. Mm -hmm. But one thing I appreciate now is that I'm very certain I was meant to be in graduate school mm -hmm. now. Yeah. And during my stay in IAS, my mindset about mission has shifted a bit. I no longer believe that going to seminary is the evidence of having a call from God. Mm. Uh, because we, uh, going to seminary may be just for the sake of being equipped more right. for ministry. Right. Therefore, God can give each individual a call, mm -hmm. but use him in a different way to bring many to the fold. Mm -hmm. So I think I appreciate uh, being in IAS graduate school. I feel I've been more useful while in IAS being there than I could have been mm. if I was in the seminary mm -hmm. at this period of my development. Yeah, and we believe that mission is for all of the areas at IAS. So the business department is focused on mission and the education on mission and public health on mission, as well as the seminary on mission. So the integration of faith and learning, the integration of faith in your career or what Christianity speaks about as vocation, the calling through the career that you go into, regardless of whether it's the clergy or not, is a powerful thing. Um, and certainly it's our approach here. We're all involved in mission. I've That's seen true. you doing that. I've seen yeah. you doing that. One of the things, Philip, that um, I always ask is, how has IAS developed you more for leadership? How have you experienced that part of the mission of IAS? Um, I appreciate being in IAS because it has enhanced my leadership skills to a great deal. Before coming, I did believe I'm meant to be a leader. Mm -hmm. But then I didn't know how God wants me to serve in that capacity. Mm -hmm. I'm an ordained elder for some years now. Mm -hmm. I got into eldership when I was 21. And this was a very big church of 3,000 people, young people. Mm -hmm. So with all those plannings there, with all those challenges there, I think I developed much more in a sense that I felt the responsibility that God had put on me for the sake of other people. So I knew definitely that God is molding me for something. Mm -hmm. And when I was given this chance to come for this interview, I tried to connect some things because I was initially in a public high school as well. Yeah. This is one of the oldest schools in my country that the British colonies then established as a center where the kids of the local leaders could go and be trained for national leadership. Mm. So once I found myself there, knowing the history of this school and seeing the figures in our country that this school has produced, then I felt perhaps I'm here for a reason mm -hmm. that I don't know yet. Mm -hmm. Going to my campus, our church had a very clear vision. And part of that vision was to develop Christ-centered uh, leadership, mm -hmm. Christ-like leaders who bring influence to the society, especially secular society. In Kenya. In Kenya. Mm -hmm. So coming to Ayas, I find Ayas having a mission to develop leaders, mm -hmm. servant leaders. And therefore my stay here 
has been a moment that I look around the leaders in our campus, see how they do things, how they treat people, how they manifest whatever we proclaim to do as an institution. So I'm glad that I've learned what servant leadership means mm -hmm. because mostly we think leadership is more than just being a servant. It's, no, it's sometimes hard to imagine that a leader can be a servant at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I can confess that I've seen that in Ayas whereby a leader comes down to minister to the needs of the very people he leads or she leads. Mm -hmm. And that's something I've picked that can go a long way to mold me as a leader. Mm -hmm. Being in a multicultural environment in itself has made me question so many preconceived ideas I grew up with in my small community. It's a time that I had to question whether why do I do what I do the way I do it. And instead of judging other people, what they do, which may be weird according to my perspective, I've learned to seek to understand first. Mm -hmm. Ask why they do what they do, the way they do different from what I do. So I've learned to appreciate div different uh, cultures and contexts. And I believe this is something that can help me as a leader going forward. Also, there have been challenges that are faced in my stay here in various capacities. But I don't focus on the negativity of those circumstances. However, I pick what they have brought out of me. Mm -hmm. The great, amazing resilience that they have developed in me, the patience and even the trust to still hold on to God. I think those are very important lessons that can go a long way to help me when called to any leadership capacity. Mm -hmm. So to this very end, Many years I did ask myself, what can my family do for me? For many years I've asked myself, what can the church do for me? Mm. And even much more, what can Kenya's my nation do for me? But as I near my, the end of my program at IS, I'm beginning to question differently. What can I do for my family? Mm. What can I do for my church? And what can I do for Kenya as my nation? Mm -hmm. So these questions drive me going forward, even as I look forward to going back to my country mm -hmm. to serve. Mm -hmm. We will really miss you when you go back there. And uh, I know you'll take a little piece of IS in your heart as you go. I wish you God's richest blessings, Philip, as you finish your program here. Thank you. And um, that you'll continue to develop and go down this place, this, this road journey that God has for you. Thank you so much for sharing of your heart and your thought with us today. I appreciate for this opportunity. God bless you. Thank you.